Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video about how ridiculously cool and iconic Goku is as a character. And I'm here with Sun TJ. Welcome. Hello, it's your boy Son TJ. You know the Goku guys gotta talk about Son Goku pretty much all the time. <laughs> so let's get started. So what exactly is it that you appreciate and love about Goku's character? Well, I remember when I was younger, which I think that's what happens to a lot of American fans, we all fell in love with Dub Funimation Goku, which was the, I'm the hope of the universe, I'm the true one, I'm the chosen one. But when I got older and I started understanding what Goku was, and again, it's, people have this misconception that he's like some secretly evil dude. Nah, he's still a guy, he's still in that realm of a protector. But when I was growing up as a kid, I loved how much Goku represented like hope, but undying wavery for it. And yes. now being older and understanding that Goku, even though he's not on the uh, Superman with a cape, he's more of a Superman who just does it and he doesn't really have to do the most with it. He's not putting on a suit, he's just doing it. I understand Goku now is where he's a character where he does, just does the right thing because that's how he was raised to be. Yeah. And he does things just because he feels it's the right thing to do. And does he make mistakes? Yes. Um, but I respect that he's a character who's willing to take those risks. And he's matured and like he already has his own character progression throughout. So long story short, when I was younger, I just thought he was the ultimate hero. And as I get older, I feel like he's a character where he's still a hero, but he has flaws. And those flaws are okay. He's definitely a flawed character, but I think what a lot of people perceive as flaws are just considered flaws because he doesn't have a straightforward sense of morality that a lot of people respect in characters like Superman. But despite that, yeah. despite that, I think a, a lot of the, the defining difference between Goku and Superman is that Goku is a martial artist. He's a martial artist first. He's constantly thinking about improving as a martial artist. And I'm and like I said in my last video, that makes him seem kind of off because he's he's that's he's so pure and he just has to like practice martial arts all the time because that is the way he's essentially programmed. A lot of people don't get this yeah. about Goku, but like his grandfather literally like took what he was as a wild little monkey boy who was violent and he noticed that he noticed it was, he was a violent little monkey child and so he was like well maybe if I teach him martial arts which is about discipline um, like taming the ego not being so animalistic I can point him in the direction of being a productive member of society and so like that's what I really like that about his character because it's sort of like Grandpa Gohan just took his nature and pointed it in a direction to make him productive. He saw what he was on the inside, and so he picked martial arts specifically because martial arts specifically is what he needed in order to be a better person, which is a really interesting idea because, you know, had he been taught anything else, it's very likely he would not have been a better person. <laughs> Even if he was just taught some sense of morals, that's not going to help whenever his instincts come out and he's, he wants to be violent. You know what I mean? But uh, but the thing I appreciate the most about Goku's character is that, to me, he is a representation of a good person who is forced to do things that aren't necessarily good for the greater good. It's sort of like the opposite of Vegeta, where Vegeta is like evil by heart, but sometimes he's forced to do good things. Um, I, I really like how Dragon Ball makes Vegeta killing people seem like a good thing when he does it towards the villains. And how it, how, it, how it makes Goku struggle to kill the villains very visually obvious in comparison to Vegeta. Because Goku is such a pure and good person by heart that he really does have to be pushed to the edge to be anything like Vegeta. And that's what I really like about his character because it's, it's sort of the opposite to Vegeta to where you can tell he's legitimately a good person at heart. And it's just like he, he's constantly being pushed to the edge to, to have to, you know, uh, do things that he wouldn't normally do. And... Within yeah. the context of Goku, he's doing it from the perspective of, I'm a, I'm a good person at heart, but I have to do this for the greater good. Whereas Vegeta, it's, I'm a bad person at heart, but his own selfishness causes him to do good things because of his bias for Earth, his bias for his family, and things of that nature. So th I really like how they play on that two aspects of each character because it's, like a, it's a really cool contrast. And I think I've always related to Goku in that way because some of the things that Goku has had to do in terms of like wiping out villains and like being strong and facing some of the obstacle obstacles that he's faced, I relate to that because, you know, I try to be the best person I possibly can and it, life is rough and sometimes you have to do things you didn't expect and sometimes, sometimes you have to be strong and work your way through situations that aren't necessarily the best and I relate to Goku's ability to do that. So that's one of the reasons I really like him as a character. The way I interpret um, Goku um, is a battle between morality that he's learned and grown from from the jump 
and naturally gaining those same instincts testing which is going to win out i felt like it was really pushed when he at raditz and his earthling side was completely on the one like it was, it was like 100 percent there but then we on, on like super saiyan that's when some of those saying instincts of like trying to figure out okay do i want to be um a, uh, like a hero my grandpa gohan raised me do i want to always try to give mercy and just that constant balance i think was what makes goku very interesting it kind of has that iconic storytelling that dragon ball has been written as because it's all dragon ball is goku and how the world interprets him and how he interprets the world yeah um and and outside of just those things I think that because you mentioned Goku and Superman, and Superman's my favorite DC superhero, with Spider-Man's my favorite Marvel, and like they've always been in like my big favorite characters. But the thing that I love about Superman and Goku is that they both heroes in their own way, and they bring hope in different ways. While Superman brings hope with like the idea of what morality should be in humankind, Goku he brings hope in just in the, in the natural fact that he believes in martial arts and. Gives giving grace to people when no one else would. Uh, which you can also argue Superman does, but Goku kind of does it in a cooler way. Uh, and to even mention Goku as a character design is just genius. No one has able to replicate how unique Goku's hair design is. Like, of course, Superman's design, you can see it anywhere. Like, everyone has like a certain hairstyle or something. Like, Goku's hair, so you can recognize him from a million miles away yes. of how unique his hairstyle is. And my personal favorite uh, Goku Gi is, of course, the orange and blue. Is his kanji is iconic uh, from the I think you said is the wisdom uh, if I saw in one of your videos like I know it means go in some aspects but it also can mean wisdom I can't like my, my favorite color is red orange started to naturally become my second favorite color to his attacks and moves the instant transmission that's pretty much all of the superhero moves all the best of them built into him in different ways and it makes it extremely well done because they have their own risk and reward factors and stress misses teleportation but it has the the counterpoint where you got to like find energy so the kaioken which is the most iconic moves of all time you have to be really strong and know your body well to use to the kamameha where it has this amazing cool looking move where it's like you're releasing like freaking like tiger pose uh, to releasing the dragon fist which is like it represents shinron as well like yes. everything about goku my problems with pain it just looks cool he's a character where He's a hero, but he does it in a cool way. But at the same time, he's so kind and innocent. Where like, with me, I'm a muscular guy. And a lot of people expect me to be a certain type of way. They would not expect me to be how kind I am, how willing to forgive I am. In a lot of ways, it's because of the the, um, the character that Goku was, Superman was. Like, they all represent, like, giving back or being kind, but in different ways. And I really love how Goku represented that. Yeah, I, I agree. But I think the, the sense of hope that Goku offers is just due to the fact that he is always so confident and a lot of people don't like this about Goku and I, this is one of my favorite things about Goku is whenever he's in a very very dangerous volatile situation especially in Dragon Ball Super he keeps his cool and he yeah. makes he makes everybody around him feel safe it's kind of yep. like well if you're if you're like a natural leader in the back of your mind everyone around you is going to feed off of your energy if you seem worried, if you seem distraught, if it seems like you're afraid that all hope is lost, everybody else can pick up on that. And you can see this throughout the series countless times whenever Goku is actually worried about the possibility of him losing and he does lose faith in himself, everybody around him can feel it and they can see it and they comment yep. on it every single time. And then whenever he, he you know starts smiling and he gets confident and he starts getting ahead of the situation and being on top of it, everybody else also feels that. You can see them start to smile. You can see them start to get more confident and stuff like that. So, and, and I think it Goku's appeal in that way, like the way that he causes hope, the way that Toriyama and Dragon Ball play on the martial arts aesthetic of the show through how everybody reacts to the life and death situations that he's in and how comparable and, and similar that is to whenever you're seeing somebody in a boxing match or a martial arts fight or a wrestling match and that you really care about him and you start to see him get hurt and you start to see him lose. Goku's matches as a martial artist not only hinge on whether or not he's going to improve or win the match, but from everybody else's perspective, it's also life and death. So it takes that dynamic that you see in like a lot of films and stuff like that where you're seeing like a, a sports match happen in front of your eyes and of course you've got the family of one person who's watching and hoping that he doesn't get hurt and hoping that he comes out on top and you can see the looks on their face of happiness and sadness and worry whenever they're going through the match. It takes that and it applies it to these, you know, universal level battles where like everybody's lives are on the line. And so not only does it have that same appeal as a lot of like martial arts movies and boxing and, and wrestling matches and stuff like that, but it also has the same appeal of like, you know, sci-fi films where everybody's life is on the line. And if you don't win, everybody's going to die. So like it's well you know I think the genius of it though like I got I gotta say this I'm gonna lose my train of thought is that 
the genius around Goku's characters, because we have a lot of main characters where, they, you know, like, everything's on me, but Goku does it so casually. Like, you don't even think about it. Because, like, with a lot of writers, I think this is what makes a character around my genius is that I didn't really think about it to this point, but, like, Goku has a lot of world on his shoulders, but he does it so casually, so carefree, that it's a nice balance. Because we have main characters in different franchises where you can argue that there's no sense of danger, because you feel like they have everything under control, or they're too happy-go-lucky. Hell, even people say that about Spider-Man sometimes, he cracks too many jokes. But I felt like with Goku, because of how pure and how intentional he is in martial arts, and how he handles situations where he knows the situation is dangerous, but he's not going to, like, make it seem like he's going to take it seriously while with a smile on his face ready for the battle he's not making fun of his opponent to a ridiculous degree like they know how to make goku's fights and his struggles in a way where you always buy into it and you're engaged you don't yes. ever feel like it's completely you know is like you don't they never really jump the shark with goku when it turns yeah. to like how he handles the situation and that's a, that's a really good point because it sort of uh it sort of points out the difference between goku and superman more because in a lot of cases Superman is completely on top of the situation. But he's just trying to be careful and not hurt anybody unnecessarily. Whereas with Goku, he's having to like adapt to his opponent and break his limits. And so you, as you're watching him do that, you can see him progressing and you can feel the the weight of the situation as, you know, it hinges on his ability to surpass his opponent. So it's like you're never, you're never mad they should join the fight either. You're like like there's some moments you can argue like oh, Kobe, you're doing a lot, but like you are happy with him in a lot of like you're, you're watching Drama Wire, in my personal opinion, but like when you're seeing Goku, he's excited that he's able to like test his new move or do something incredible. You're excited to see it with him. That's right. But uh I think to me, and this is I I, I had to say this because I've said it before. I think to me, honestly, what makes Goku the most iconic is the fact that Akira Toriyama is such a media, he's, he's so obsessed with film and media, and he, you know, he loves Star Wars, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Sun Wukong, there's, you know, there's tons of different t types of media and films and stuff like that that he is a fanboy of, and you can see that in Goku. So essentially, like, Goku yeah. is everything that Akira Toriyama loves mixed into one product, and you can really tell that he's like essentially that guy. He's 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 Toriyama's favorite characters from all of these iconic pieces of media mixed together into one character. And that's what I mean, like he's his own character. But you can tell, especially like in different arcs, that he's taking from different characters and inspirations from different characters to to add to Goku. Whether it be Superman, Bruce Lee, Sun Wukong, Jackie Chan, a chosen one from Star Wars. There's, there's there's tons of different parts of the story where you can tell that he is heavily influenced by a very iconic idea, a very iconic character, and he applies it to Goku, and it just works. Goku's such a great character because, like, he can be interpreted so many different ways. Like, you know, like for example, when I grew up, I, I had the Funimation interpretation where he was the ultimate hero that still made mistakes here and there, or where you get the more manga Kuroshirama take. Or you have the Toei take. Goku is such a great character because either, either way how you look at him, you will still get the overall idea of him despite the origin of how you came across that character. Yeah. I, I think Akira Toriyama and uh, even Toyotaro do a very good job conveying who Goku is. I know a lot of people don't necessarily think that, but and this is something I think people commonly misunderstand about Dragon Ball Super. Dragon Ball Z was about Goku learning to embrace his Saiyan side. That's what Dragon Ball Z yep. was about. And Dragon Ball Super is about Goku learning the merit of his nature as an Earthling. And so he's gravitating back towards who he was before Dragon Ball Z because that's the series' way of giving him balance. The entire series mm -hmm. is about maintaining balance. And so it, people, you'll notice that like in Dragon Ball Super, they're really trying to highlight Vegeta's connection to his Saiyan heritage, Goku's connection to his Earthling heritage, because, uh -huh. because they both have already been affected by one another in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, and, I, and I think that's a lot. Of, that's an underlying theme of Dragon Ball that a lot of people overlook is the martial arts aspect of it because that is the number one and most importantly taught principle in martial arts is the idea of balance. And so Dragon Ball plays on this in a very creative way and I really like how Goku is the baseline of one aspect of human nature and Vegeta is the baseline of another aspect of human nature because that's why each character is so iconic and why they appeal to a particular type of person because if you relate to one aspect of human nature more than the other, that's the character that you're going to relate to. And that's another thing that Kira Toriyama did very well. And that's and that's the reason that, like, he's so good at creating so many different appealing characters is because there's, like, a psychological element to the characters themselves. They're relatable to specific types of people. And I, I think they do that in a lot of different anime, but particularly in Dragon Ball's case, if you're one type of person or another, it's very likely that you'll find a character in Dragon Ball that you relate to. It's very subtle. 
Like, because I think with Dragon Ball, like people like to uh, like downplay the writing, but when you really look into a lot of these characters, I, I think the reason why Dragon Ball is like the, the main like get into anime anime is that you can find yourself with a character without them beating you over the head with it. Like, you get that Gohan struggles with his confidence. They don't have to beat over the head once he gets past a certain point. You can understand that sticks with him. You can understand that Goku is a person where it, he's never going to give up unless there's extreme circumstances. You understand Vegeta is always going to have an ego. Yeah. <laughs> or you're going to understand Trunks is always going to be a character who wants to be a hero, but he's still learned the ways. Briyama is such a nerd that like he treats his characters like real people. I, I've seen in different interviews where he'll be like, Gohan hates fighting and that's the reason I decided to like stop pushing him as a fighter because as I was drawing him I noticed how much he actually hated fighting. Toriyama like treats his characters like real people. You could tell this through like and Gohan fans have hated him ever since. <laughs> and you can tell in his interviews and stuff that like you know he has a very very particular and very very strict idea of what these characters are. But anyway so one last question before we hop off here. To you what is the most iconic thing about Goku? I feel like for me, with my drive, with with me wanting to be a creative, a content creator, to be wanting an athlete, to maintaining who I am as a person despite how much the world challenges me, I think that really does come from seeing Goku despite him growing older, from being a little kid to being a teenager to being an adult, and seeing how he maintains his ideology despite how bad things get. Of course, you have to grow and adapt, but that core of who he is, for much people give a crap for with trying to give mercy to people or having this mentality that like yes he want to be there for his family but he knows he has to be strong enough to protect his family i think that undying will to be true to yourself but also protect the ones you love while doing so and adapting but maintaining who you are i think that's what helped me shape me a lot as a person of course i had spider-man superman different ideologies but i think that core aspect of goku as a person from the hairstyle to my brother always wearing orange and blue i think him being consistent and, and be staying true to himself while also being badass and over the top of who he is is the most iconic thing about Goku that's always maintained to me and me being a fan since I was like I don't know how old I was when I first played the first Budokai to who I am now where I'm like in my mid twins. I, I still love Goku to this day that is literally one that, that's probably why I relate to Goku more than anything else because I have had to struggle with things in my life that could have easily changed who I was they could have easily broken me and completely changed who I was, changed my perception of everything for the worse. And I've always found strength and solace in not only Goku's dedication to his craft, his unwillingness to give up on who he is on the inside and maintain who he is on the inside is something I relate to very, very heavily. Love that about his character. I couldn't agree with you more. And I honestly do think that that probably is the most appealing thing about Goku's character. I actually think that you hit the nail right on the head. Anyway, thank you so much yeah, for coming on the I channel. Could, okay, no problem. Uh, I could I could get with the with the, the normal response, like, man, I just love how you don't give up, man. I love weights, but I just wanted to go into the deeper aspects of it. <laughs> yes, and I really appreciate that because that was an amazing point, and I and I really appreciate you coming on the channel. Thank you so much. Anyway, we're gonna wrap it up, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.